What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. One more week of regular season action here in the SFL, and then it is playoff time. Super excited about that. Hope that you guys are too. Today we are taking on a division rival in the Melbourne Dreadnoughts going down to the harbor in Melbourne. And Melbourne season is over, 6-10. and 10. They will not be in the playoffs. However, we are taking on a subscriber player, wide receiver Alexander Klublek. Have not played him yet, and I am super excited to hopefully cap off our season at 12-5. and 5. And we'll go ahead and get a quick look at the standings here around the SFL I would show you the playoff picture. I'll put a screenshot of the playoff picture up here on the screen. For some reason, when I switch teams to add the subscriber players, you know, I got to go to another team and edit their roster. When I go back to the Thunderbirds, that view playoff button's gone. Don't ask me why. Mad and stupid. That's the short answer to that one. But I'll put the playoff picture on the screen here. But getting a look at the league, the San Antonio Voyagers still in first place at 13 and 3 and they will more than likely worst they could do is tie with the blues so they will probably be the best team in the sfl san diego aviators and us thunderbirds tied at 11 and 5 if we win this game today depending on what the aviators do we could be the number one seed we could be the two seed if we lose we could drop to the three or the four seed probably so there's a lot at stake today virginia beach blues they are still doing great 12 and 4 on the season and then we get a look at the Redwoods and the Oklahoma City Antlers at 11 and 5. Six win ball clubs. You got the Anchorage Snowhawks. You got the Vancouver Huskies and the Montreal Monarchs. No subscriber players on any of those teams. Nine win ball clubs. You got the Salt Lake City Bisons, Honolulu Dragons, Oakland Wizards, and the San Juan Tigers, as well as the Portland Steamers. Get a look at our 500 ball clubs. Hashtag Oilers Nation. I feel like the Oilers are becoming a fan favorite team. We got like four subscribers, maybe more. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. May have some news here in a few minutes, but Oilers will probably be in the playoffs and they have been on a pretty good tear. Winners of six in a row. Wow, that's absolutely crazy. The other 500 ball clubs, we got the Chicago Elks, Louisville Desperados, the Austin Lumberjacks, and the Dublin Shamrocks, who they were doing really good. They've lost two in a row now, so they are probably, this is probably a must-win game for them, I would imagine. And then the sub-500 ball clubs, we got the Columbus Caps, Memphis River Hogs, and Paris Black Knights, all at 7-9. and Six-win ball clubs, we got the Melbourne Dreadnoughts, who we play today, St. Louis Bulls, and the Tokyo Golden Eagles. And then some of the other teams that are, uh, you know, bit down on their luck, unfortunately, we got the Orlando Orbits. We got the Can Condors, we got the Albuquerque Armadillos, London Mounties, and the Sacramento Sentinels, and then the four win ball clubs uh, fighting for that number one draft pick, I guess, would be the Brooklyn Nighthawks and the Omaha Pioneers. Here, look at the Melbourne Dreadnoughts roster here, and I apologize if I am sweating in this one, guys. My AC is not working in my office currently, and let me just tell you what, it is hotter than the Devil's Jockstrap in a triple overtime game up here today. What? I got the sleeveless on, as a matter of fact, for that reason. So if I'm sweating today, it's not because I'm nervous, it's because it is hot as Hades up here. But the Melbourne Dreadnoughts, we got uh, Bryce Young, Hedden Hooker, backing him up, a couple of rookie quarterbacks, really... You know, two-year pros in real life. We got Devin Singletary and Jamal Williams as the running back. So nothing too crazy there. I want to. I feel like did the Dreadnoughts beat us earlier in the season? I know we played them. I can't remember. I feel like it might have been a good game though. Alec Ingold is the fullback, and then looking at wide receivers, they got of course superstar Jalen Waddle. But the man of the hour is Mr. Alexander Kolublek, five foot eleven, two hundred and sixty-one pound slot guy that's like the craziest build i've ever seen and i got a feeling he's gonna be trucking our guys today left and right and really just a solid overall all-around receiver no real true weaknesses he's just good at everything so uh i know uh alexander you're looking for your first touchdown here in the sfl you might get it today and oh that's right so this is what happens if you get injured right so we see mr sia here looks exactly like Alexander, same build, same everything. If you get injured, again, hindsight's 2020. I should have turned injuries off, but I just takes I take said injured player 
change your name to something else, get you off the roster and recreate you. So next episode, I'm going to go through the subscriber season stats, but it might get a little bit wonky. So like in this case, you know, the full season stats will be Mr. Sia here's stats as well as Alexander's stats combined. So Tyler Higby at tight end. So we got Harrison Bryant, former Mackey award winning tight end out of FAU. And getting a look at their offensive line, got an injury there. So Patrick McCarry starting on the left tackle position. Anthony Bradford, the rookie at left guard. This team doesn't look that good, really, on paper. Frank Ragnow is a good center. So at least they got some. Okay, Chris Lindstrom is a good guard. So the offensive line's getting a little bit better. Terrence Steele, nothing really too special there. And defensively, it looks like they're battling some injuries. No Taekwon Lewis. So Viliami Bayoko is going to be the left end. Jonathan Grenard. Going to be a right end. He'll definitely be higher rated in Madden 25, I'm sure. And defensive tackles don't look great. Derek Gennady, John Jenkins, I mean, you know, serviceable. Another injury there. So Rashad Weaver, they are stricken with injuries just as bad, if not worse, than as we are. Patrick Qu uh, Queen, good middle linebacker, so that's good for them. Ivan Pace, the rookie out of Cincy, also there as well. Alec Highsmith is a very good right outside linebacker. PS2 is the cornerback. He's obviously very good, one of the best. But then some uh, significant drop-off, I would say. Avante Maddox is their number two. Marcus Jones, Michael Davis. So aside from Patrick, nothing really too much to worry about. Xavier McKinney, the about-to-be uh, or current Green Bay Packer. Now looking forward to seeing the X-Men in green and yellow. Kyle Duggar, good, strong safety. Cameron Dicker, pretty good kicker. That's some bars right there, too, by the way. And then Logan Cook is the punter. But... Before we dive into this episode, guys, get ready. We got, you know what time it is. Cue the countdown. More subscribers joining the league. Yes, that is right. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. We got got to be over 40 subscribers now. I didn't even count. Should have. But uh, thank you guys so much for the engagement. And if you, it's not too late, if you want to join the SFL and see your creative players, you know, week after week, at least their stats, I will put the credentials that you need to comment down below. But first and foremost here, goodbye, Russell Wilson. Speaking of the Aviators, we got a new quarterback in town, and that is Mr. Cameron Moore. Shout out to at Cameron Moo08 in the comments. Now, you did not uh, give me an appearance to work with, so I just, this was, uh, I think, like Max Duggan or something is the guy I replaced you with. So I just kept the appearance looking the same. But please tell me in the comments what you would like to look like, and I will change that next episode here. But Cameron Moore, uh, great throw power and great deep accuracy. Really good accuracy all around. Even the medium and the short is pretty good as well. But bombing the ball downfield is his specialty for sure. And also pretty fast as well. And I just got a sneaky suspicion that we are going to be seeing Cameron and the Aviators here at some point in the SFL playoffs. Oilers Nation, where are you at? We now have, what, four subscriber players on this team. Another subscriber wide receiver to go along with Kyrie Brooks, and that would be Mr. Floyd Butler. Shout out at Floyd Shady 2 in the comments. And same, you know, again, same as uh, Cameron. Didn't give me an appearance, so I just kept it as what, you know, it was when I changed this player to you. So please let me know what you'd like to look like, you know, appearance-wise in the comments, and I will change that. So Floyd is a playmaker going to be the Oilers wide receiver number three. And with that 97 speed, I imagine they'll have him in a lot of uh, slot sets, right? Also really good medium route running as well. So definitely a force to be reckoned with. They got a subscriber quarterback, a subscriber running back, and two subscriber wide receivers now. So watch out for the Houston Oilers in the playoffs as well. And then last but not least, we got Mr. Lionel Moore. Shout out at that guy who tries in the comments. Going to be the new quarterback in uh, Rio de Janeiro for the Redwoods here. And it works out good because Justin Fields is injured. And let's be honest, it's Justin Fields anyways. And the Redwoods are deep, deeply ingrained in the playoffs. So welcome to an already pretty good team here, Mr. Moore. Uh, dual threat quarterback. Got good throw power. Solid in all the accuracies. Can throw on the run. Good play action. Pretty decent under pressure. And with that 95 speed, I feel like it's going to be a pick your poison type of battle with Lionel here. Do you want him in the pocket? Do you want him on the on the run? Scrambling? Making, you know, improvising, making plays happen. I feel like he'll probably do well at both. 
and I'm sure uh, he just took Justin Fields' job with no problem at all. All right, guys, we are going down to the harbor in Melbourne, Australia, going down under, and playoffs right around the corner just wrapped up the uh, Super Bowl in my other series, Sentinels Franchise. Not going to tell you we were in it. I'm not going to tell you who won, but if you haven't, haven't watched it, go check it out. It was definitely a fun time, but we are here in the SFL now, and if you are fired up for some more content and you are liking this series so far, loving it, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Remember, at 1,000 subscribers, I will do an NFL jersey giveaway almost at 900 right now, so please help me get there. Click that subscribe button. It's free, and if you like Madden football, guess what? Madden 25 is about to come out. EA Sports College uh, Sports Wait, what NCAA whatever the college game is about to come out tons of content on the channel but without further ado let's get on down to the harbor and get ready for the game Dreadnought's gonna get the ball first so we will be able to see our subscriber wide receiver Alexander Klublek what type of game will he have I think a lot of it depends on what type of game this guy has right here Bryce Young as we get a look at see what he's doing so far in the season, he is 26 touchdowns and 20 interceptions. Wow, that's not very good. 3,500 passing yards. I think Jordan loves over 5,000. So Bryce, you know, not really. Uh, maybe I should have added our one of our subscriber quarterbacks to the Dreadnoughts in hindsight. That would have been pretty cool. Bryce Young, probably not the answer. And there's Jalen Waddle right off the bat. Him and Club Leck are probably going to be a pretty dynamic duo today as Jalen Waddle picks up 15 on the Dreadnoughts opening play of the game. And as I talk about Bryce Young not playing too great, watch. He's probably listening in this one, and he'll probably go off for 400 today. That's usually how it works, right? That's going to be Devin Singletary with a nice gain, jumping over people, hurdling, and he picks up 16. So 31 yards total on the Dreadnoughts first couple plays. And remember, they're 6 and 10, guys. All right, come on now. We got uh, our subscribers, D-Tackles, Jay Monstro, Silas Vaden. Need you guys to please make an impact in this one. Singletary going to get to the second level again. And these Dreadnoughts, look, they don't really have much to play for. But it's a division game. And you never want to, I don't care if where, you know, only one loss on the season, they're only one win on the season. You don't want to lose to your division rivals. And around to Club Black, and there's that vicious stiff arm. It's a rush only for a gain of two, but we should have had him in the backfield. He put that big old mitt, got that right in somebody's face mask. They're definitely going to be feeling that one in the morning for sure. So nice little uh, trick play by number 79 there. Let's see if Bobby Wagner can maybe get in the backfield. There he is, right on cue making a great stop and finally we're able to stop these dreadnoughts for a negative gain about a little dime blitz here on a friday night it is friday night as i record this whatever day it is when you guys are watching it hope you're having a great day bryce young almost got sacked there had to throw it away we had brandon graham in the backfield and yeah talked about injuries pre-game we got a lot of them <laughs> and a lot of key guys at that too so there's actually been a matter of fact a lot of injuries league-wide here in this sfl franchise really wish i would have turned those off but you live and you learn and bryce young gets sacked old school bobby wagner turning back the hands of time making a couple clutch plays and that's actually if you could believe it after that great start to the drive it's gonna put melbourne out of field goal range so they're gonna have to bring in logan cook to punt this ball and the Tiber, ooh, that could be a coffin dagger. Just barely went out. Touchback going to the 20. Yeah, so there's the difference. Uh, Jordan Love over 5,000 yards, 33 touchdowns. Not necessarily happy about the 17 picks. It's not at least we know we don't lead the league in picks, right? We just saw Bryce Young with 20 of them jaunts, but not happy about the 17 interceptions, especially. Jordan wasn't really slinging them too much at the start of the season. There's Tubby. Tubby McDouble, subscriber out of Oregon State, picking up three. Was not able to juke the X-Man. Come out shotgun now, spread with love. And this might be Kareem Hunt up the middle. That's picked. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> that was almost intercepted there by Avante Maddox. And I would have been heated because I seemingly just... Can't stop throwing those with love. I don't know. 
But here on third and seven, we're going to go ahead and motion out Valdez Scantling. Might have a subscriber wide receiver, Mike Oxmall. And look at the precision. I love, but Oxmall fumbled it. Roll over it. No. That's going to be clean, too. That was Alex Highsmith. I think that's clean. Mike, I love your brother. Oh, yeah. Oh, it wasn't even Highsmith that poked it out. It was actually Patrick Sertan, I think. But regardless, uh, it's not an interception, but it is still a turnover. So, uh, at Rams fan in the comments, got some explaining to do, brother. No, I'm just kidding. It happens. Happens to the best of us, but there's another good run by Singletary. Right up the gut. And the Dreadnoughts do got it now into T-Bird's territory. Now, I'm coming out blitz, but let's... I actually don't want to run blitz. Let's go ahead and drop down into man coverage and uh, see what Young does out of the single back. It's going to be a play fake. He's going up top. And it's Kleblek, but it's broken up. Oh, wow. Jordan Poyer there at the very last second. I thought big number 79 was going to come down with that thing. He cooked um, uh, Patrick Peterson, and he has it there for a moment. Wow, but in comes Poyer, and that was close to a, a football move there. Didn't make two steps, so that is not going to be a fumble. But wow, good looking out, Jordan Poyer. I really appreciate you, brother. Uh, I would have I, I would have been happy to see Alex get a, a nice a nice touchdown there, but. Definitely still trying to win, and Bobby Wagner's still trying to get sacks. Nice uh, extension there, diving catch from Waddle. That's going to get the Dreadnoughts down to the 23. Hey, this Dreadnoughts team is looking good. Not going to lie, they are looking good. We're going to use her up on Joyner. It's going to be a run, a Singletary, good blocks. Can we strip it, maybe? Nope, he might score. Dragon tacklers all the way to the end zone. Devin freaking Singletary. He's a pretty good player now. Not saying he's not. But, I mean, he's running like Nick Chubb out here or CMC or somebody. Got some uh, out routes working to the right here coming out of shotgun. And as long as the protection's good, Oxmall, I'm giving you another chance. Wow, that one was almost intercepted there by Patrick Queen. And I don't know what happened with Jordan Love, man. Maybe it's me. It's probably me. We'll just go ahead and go with that. Safe to say. But he hasn't been looking himself these last couple weeks. I do think a lot of it's be uh, the protection or lack thereof, but let's just go to MVS. He's been our big saving grace as of late, playing great, having great games, big uh, 150, 125 plus yard gains, games, I should say. He picks up a first down, and we are keeping this drive going. About two minutes to go till the end of the first, and let's just see uh, who can get open here. I see somebody. There's Zay Jones also. Going to be a much bigger key component as Chris Olave is gone for probably the rest of the season, including the playoffs. We're going to need Zay Jones to step up for sure. We are in Justin Tucker field goal range, yes, but uh, you know your boy wants more here, so hopefully we can pick it up. We'll come out single back. Going to be a play fake again, and our tight end, who's now back, Darren Waller. It's a bad throw by Love. He sailed it, and Avante Maddox gets the breakup. And I just uh, don't really know what's going on here with these T-Birds. We're not looking like a potential number one seed, even though we are. So we're going to have to get our stuff together for sure. Big third and ten. Put Zay Jones on a curl and see who can potentially possibly get open. There's Darren Waller. So happy to have him back. And actually, Darren Waller announced his retirement in real life. How about that? And it looks like he is uh, making music videos now. So very, very, very interesting. If you haven't watched any of them, I recommend you go to YouTube. They're not bad. Um, there's something, though. <laughs> there's something. Getting a lot of hate in the comments, too, on uh, Darren Waller's music videos. Leave my man alone, man. Let him do him, all right? Let him <laughs> express his emotions the way he wants to express it and worry about yourself. Darren Waller, if you're watching this, which I'm sure you're not, I got your back, brother. Don't even worry about it. And I need someone to get open. I'm going to try. Oh, Zay Jones. Catching it at the pylon. That was not an easy play at all. And that was a really good pass from Love. Only about one place he could have put it. 
Zay Jones, did he get the toe drag swag? Ugh, I don't know. I don't know. Kind of hope they don't review that one, which they won't. Okay. So nice response by the T-Birds and Jordan Love. A couple bad passes there, but all in all, it's a pretty good drive. A lot of shootouts, high-scoring games here in the SFL Thunderbirds franchise as of late, and I don't necessarily like it. I don't necessarily like Devin Singletary either, but I do like seeing my man Jalen Waddle get injured. I don't. Injuries, uh, no. You know what? This is Madden. That's not real Jalen Waddle. If it was real Jalen Waddle, that would suck. It's auto-generated Jalen Waddle. I say get out of here, man. Get out of here. But that will make Mr. Alexander Kloblek wide receiver number one, at least for now. So we'll see how he does in that role. It's going to be a little check down to Singletary. And Leonard Floyd is there to wrestle him down. Go ahead and shade underneath here. And also guest pass. Maybe Miles Garrett would love to see him in the backfield. Nope. That is going to be OBJ who's on this team now. Uh, I guess he always was. I don't know. He's on the Dreadnoughts. And OBJ doing a little dance, picking up 19. That's going to take us to the end of the first quarter. So a back and forth game. Pretty exciting. If not for that fumble, we, you know, maybe up 14-7 or 10-7. But, hey, we're outpassing them. Uh, but they are vastly outrushing us. So I need the interior guys to uh, buckle down, get in the backfield. I'm sick of calling Devin Singletary's name. I got to be honest with you. And hopefully we can do just that. So we'll see if Bryce goes back to him. He will. And that time, I mean, what is this guy? Who is this guy? That is not Devin Singletary. No way. Because he is running vicious. All right, I'm sending the boys again. They got a fullback in too. So Zach Cunningham is definitely going to be the user. Good enough defense. I think Garrett was the first man in there. I saw Vaden as well. And another big third and six. Not going to go pressure on this one. I am going to have a spy out here on the field. Not even necessarily to watch Bryce Young, but just someone to kind of a man in the middle there and uh, see where Bryce decides to go. It's OBJ, but he dropped it. Slippery fingers there. But that will bring in the kicker, Cameron Dicker. And I'm sure Ed, that's, I'm telling you, man, There's there might be some potential bars in this game with Dicker and Kicker. What else rhymes with uh, Kicker and Dicker? Wicker? Nothing Wicker on the field. Slicker? Okay. He's kicking the ball. It's getting slicker. Cameron Dicker going home and putting his blankets in a basket that's Wicker. I don't know. Stop it. Get some help. Three wide receivers to the right. Could be Oxmall. My first read it is. Quick step drop. Got him. Mike uh, toning for his previous Sins there with the fumble, picking up a nice first down. We're moving pretty good on this drive. I'm liking what I'm seeing from the boys here. Let's uh, go draw play to Tubby. Really want to get him going. He's got some space up the middle. That's a little bit better. I can take a gain of six. Four rushes for 14 yards. Still not the best thing in the world. Averaging uh, close to four yards per carry, but not quite there. And now we're going to be coming out of the I form set. Still going to go to Tubby. I kind of... Let's uh, send out Valdez Scantling here just to kind of fool the defense a little bit. I know I got to snap this ball. This is probably going to be all for nothing, or will it? Nope. First down run from Tubby. Now he's starting to pick it up. You love to see it. Got our 13 personnel out here. Three tight ends set from the 30-yard line. So definitely looking at one of my tight ends. It's going to be Logan Thomas. Good enough. I'll take these little five, six-yard gains, man. I, maybe that's one of the reasons why I have uh, thrown a lot of picks with love. Maybe just looking for the deep shot too much or looking for, you know, the home run play too much. Maybe we just go with these short, safe completions. That might be formula for success. Probably had Waller there, if I'm being honest, but didn't really want to throw it cross body. And I just... I don't necessarily know what's going on with this protection. I realize I rolled out on that one. Okay, yes, I'll take that. But it's just not seeming like it like it used to be. It's a big third and four. Let's see if we can pick this up. What the fuck is this? I don't know. It's going to be picked. Probably. Nope. Spat it down by Patrick Queen. And it looks like we are going to be responding with a field goal of our own. So if nothing else, I will say 
Jets teams are playing pretty consistent, but where a potential first round, first, uh, first number one seed, the Dreadnoughts are six and ten, so I'm not really confident that we are looking like we're evenly matched in this one. Came out blitz, but I'm actually gonna audible into the zone. I am watching Devin Singletary like a hawk back there. He has been the man. There's Jay Monstro, our subscriber wide receiver out of Iowa, picking up a, or making a nice play, I should say. Only limiting Singletary to a gain of three, which is much better than what we have been seeing here as of late. Now, I am bringing pressure this time, but need Miles Garrett to kind of get back there. It's going to be Harrison Bryant on the reception, but he actually goes backwards. Come on, defense. You've been a little sus lately, but you kind of picked it up in the last game and really hoping that you could pick it up in this one too. Where's Bryce going to go? He's getting flushed out. And I mean, come freaking on, dude. It's Robert Woods. Old man Robbie. He was so open. He was putting his hand up and waving his hand. Coverage broke down and that was a nice find from Bryce Young. Two minute warning. And we do get the ball after halftime. So I would love to somehow stop the Dreadnoughts here. Get the ball back and score, although there's not really a whole lot of time for that, unfortunately. Bryce coming out single back, though, so may actually be a running play. Nope, it is not. He did get flushed out, and look at Poyer. Or no, I'm sorry, DJ Reed, my apologies. Corners and safeties making some really big plays in this one, preventing some uh, potential game-changing plays from these Dreadnoughts receivers. So if nothing else, nothing else, we got that going for us. Now Young will drop back into the shotgun. And, ooh, dangerous pass there from Bryant. And he couldn't hold on to it as Bobby Wagner was right there in coverage. Yes, pass, shade inside, play good defense. And if if we force an incompletion or something here, we just may have a shot. Oh, no, Young, he should have just kept going. We're going to call a timeout. He, if he was flushed out of the pocket. And if he just would have kept going, he had that first down. But he just hesitated for a second. Don't necessarily know why he did that, but it gave our defenders a chance to clue in on him. And this is really big here. We can go down here and score even a field goal I will take and chance to complete the ever illustrious double dip scenario, which I would definitely like to do. We're gonna start out here, play action, but it's gonna be uh, some crossers on the field, which I usually like if the coverage is there and it's MVS again. That was not an easy catch. And I've always liked MVS. I'm a little biased because I'm sure most of you guys know I'm a, you know, Packers guy. And he had some, I mean, some decent years with Green Bay. Nothing too crazy, but some decent years. So I've always liked him. And I also like Zay Jones being my first read on this one. Bullet pass. Can we get it in there? Man, oh man. Avante Maddox is balling in this game. I know I said there was some drop off in the corners, but he ain't playing like it. Screen pass to Tubby makes sense here. We got two timeouts, clock not a factor. And again, I am okay with a field goal if that's what ends up happening. I mean, Joe Tooney, can you get out there and block, man? Don't know why you were running towards Tubby. You should have been looking for the next guy to hit. And here on third and one, I think draw play is the right move. I really do. I see Zay Jones getting pressed. I see MVS getting pressed. I'm not going to let the devil creep in. Not going to let those intrusive thoughts win. Tubby going to convert. Call a timeout. And uh, we're almost in Justin Tucker field goal range, if not already. Go bunch to the right here out of the shotgun. Mike Oxmall, he might be. First read. I don't like. We're going to get sacked. Yeah, I think I did actually have Oxmall as a matter of fact. But I'm just a little scared to pull the trigger. And I'm going to try to hit a bomb shot here, but with not a lot of time on the clock, just in case something crazy happens. And I mean, we're going to get sacked again, aren't we? I know we lost Trent Williams, one of the best left tackles in the game. Just out of curiosity, though, what is Justin Tucker's? Yeah, no, 71. So let's bring in Jack Mavros, subscriber punter. I don't like putting the ball, but I do love seeing my man on the field. See if he can deliver a nice coffin corner kick to uh, just end this half of football. Get us into the locker room. Reevaluate. It's a good enough punt, and it's going to take all the time off. So that will do it for the first half. 10-10 on the scoreboard. So low scoring game. 
I don't really like the way the T-Birds are playing lately. I don't. I mean, there's obviously we do good things, but I think that our offensive line play has some question marks. I think Jordan Love's accuracy has some question marks. At least in this game, our running game has some question marks. And we get a look at Battle of the Subscriber Players. Michael Yakin on the Lumberjacks has the edge in this one over Derek Daragosa and the Nighthawks, who we just beat barely last episode. More subscribers here, Albuquerque Armadillos and the Wizards. I am Al Musa, the running back who has just been balling out since joining the SFL, playing good in that one as well. And then we got the Tigers and the Blues, also more subscribers. Uh, none shown on the screen, though. But we'll check at the end, see what they were able to do. Zero ball game here, and let's see if we can get Tubby going. I think that he's going to be a big part of, if we have success in this game, right? I think he's going to be a big part of it because I'm just not necessarily sold on the passing game. And I'm really not sold on this offensive line play, whether it's the in the pass block game, the run block game. I don't know. Something just seems uh, a little bit off with it, if I'm being honest. And I don't like it. And I want it to change. So second and eight here. Oxmall could be my first read. Quick step drop. Again, like I said earlier, I may just have to be settling for some of these, you know, four or five, six yard gains, stuff like that, that... That might just be the answer. I don't know. But if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. And I'm going to streak Oxmall. We'll see what that corner does as far as coverage. I don't like it. I'm waiting for Darren Waller to get open on the drag. And he's freaking getting blocked up. It's going to force a sack. And uh, all right, enter Jack Bavros. Jack, if you are watching, uh, this game's for you, brother. Not by design, necessarily, but you're getting to see some punts. And so far, it looks like it's a decent one. Tried to lay a big hit stick there, but it's not going to matter. And the Dreadnought's actually going to start this drive nearly at midfield. I'm going to start pressure here. Bryce Young coming out of the pistol, so maybe LaMarcus Joyner can get back here. That would be wonderful. If he does, free rusher almost had him. And there's Club Black. No, somebody stop him. Look at the juke. Look at the juke. Bobby Wagner finally wrestles him out of bounds. But Alexander Club Black, two-year man out of Miami. Subscriber number 79 picking up a vicious, vicious gain on that one. Did Jalen Waddle come back? He did not. So Club Black is still the wide receiver number one here. And he made a wide receiver one type of play. And there's OBJ making my day a little bit worse. Tried to rhyme there. It wasn't happening. Stop it. Get some help. We better get our stuff together, man, because they're about to score. I mean, they're, I, don't, I don't see a world where they don't score here unless we force like a game wrecking play. We got Antoine Winfield and it's Alec Xander Klublek. First touchdown, I think in the SFL and it comes in week 18 against a division rival he called it in the comments last week he said looking forward to week 18 to where we dominate you guys and I don't know if you've dominated us so far but you've definitely outplayed us the dreadnoughts have definitely outplayed us scoreboard tells the tale we had a chance to score before halftime and coming out of the locker room and didn't do either. Yeah, not looking good here, guys. We're going to come out uh, single back. We'll see if we can maybe roll out a little bit. And I'm just going to take off with love because nothing else is working. So a gain of 10, that's, uh, that's, that's definitely music to my ears for sure. I can definitely live with that. Let's, uh, we're going to go back to Kareem again inside zone, even though these running plays just aren't hitting. But, but I lied. We're going to uh, streak Zay Jones because he has heavy press over there. And we're going to put Mike Oxmo on a drag and just show me something. I'm not liking any of it. So we're going to go to Oxmo, who's still going, actually. As a matter of fact, through sheer will and determination, he picks up the first down. No way that should have been a first down at all. But guess what? It was. And I love it. I'm here for it. Uh, this is going to be RPO. I wish I could actually just turn this into an outside stretch, but I'm not going to. And Tubby trying 
trying his darndest to get something going and it's just not there yeah this is not good either i was looking for oxmall rpo but he's got patrick zertan on him zertan's not gonna get not gonna get fooled by that play fake but there's a nice run from tubby finally coach says pa cross out of i form marquez valdez scantling is the primary read he's been our best receiver as of late let's freaking go I'm rocking with it, but but it's the protection, and somehow can't blame Love for that at all. We had heavy pressure. What is going on with this offensive line? I realize Trent Williams gone, but we got you know Joe Tooney still out here, and uh, Graham Glasgow, guys like that. So I just don't know. I do know that this could be a quick step drop to Zay Jones. Bang! There it is. Didn't even necessarily mean to <laughs> possession catch it. Probably for the better. But, I mean, that was only about a step and a half from Love. I had to get that thing out quick because the free safety was blitzing, blitzing down. Didn't want to pick or anything like that. I'd say it worked out pretty darn good. We'll stick with the outside run on this one. See if Kareem Hunt can get some good blocking, which he will. And he's off to the races. There we go. So, maybe it's outside zone. Maybe outside zone's the answer. We only got, like... I think three natural outside zone uh, run plays in this playbook. Everything else is RPO, which is fine. And this is the Buffalo Bills playbook because we did. This team was the Buffalo Bills in the AFC East before I relocated them. But that evens up the score, which is good. Back to a zero ball game. So now we got to find a way to stop Mr. Alexander Klubleck, who heated up on the last drive and would love to see some picks or some sacks or some forced fumbles there is club Leck. only two receptions for 25 yards but a big 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 touchdown on the last drive we're gonna blitz again go ahead and use her up on jordan poyer just in case it's a run which it will be and singletary gonna be met there by miles garrett for a loss of one so that's good to see i think just good solid zone coverage is the answer here i do have eyes on club Leck as he has been Bryce Young's primary target, and he's going to Club Black, but Patrick Peterson was there to meet him, and surely they're not going to go for it as they're still deep in their own territory, pretty deep anyways. So that will bring out Logan Cook. So very good. Nicely done, guys. Nicely done by the defense. We got a chance to reclaim that victory that we lost a little while ago, and I was pleased with the last drive. Oh, nice move from Patrick Peterson. Let's see if he can do another one. Oh, one more juke. He could have been off to the races. He stopped there by Sean Wade. But Love and Kareem and Tubby had a good drive on the last one. See if we can keep that going. And now I actually like the uh, outside run RPO combo because outside run's oh, looking pretty good. And there's Tubby. He's not the fastest guy out there, but he's now at 11 for 70. So averaging nearly seven yards per carry when he was virtually non-existent in the first half. Second and 10 from the 26. We're coming out single back and going to roll out a little bit here. Um, Zay Jones is open. Nice ball from Love. Going to be stopped there by Patrick Sertan. But now this Thunderbirds team starting to come alive. And they're, they're coming alive at the exact right time too. Exactly when we needed them. And I don't see any reason to really go away from the outside run game. Um, Got to snap this ball, though. You know what? Not even going to worry about it. I didn't like. I was going to mess up, try to do too much, just get into the fourth quarter and reevaluate. But now we're out gaining the Dreadnoughts in both passing and rushing yards. And hopefully we'll be out gaining them on the scoreboard very soon. Let's try this again. If Zay Jones can hold a block. Kareem Hunt might be able to score for his second touchdown of the game, and the blocking wasn't great. But Kareem had the speed, and we had to really bounce that thing out to the outside. And I will say uh, Kareem Hunt, you know, his role has been kind of small on this team. Uh, it's, it's been decent at times. But the one thing I will say is he is a touchdown vulture, man. We get him down there close, you know, within the 10 yard line or so. He's got a lot of touchdowns on the season. More importantly, he gets a big one there and puts our boys up by seven. Another good defensive drive, guys. Do we have it in us or will the Dreadnoughts tie it up? It's going to be end around motion. It's Singletary. Nice cut. And somehow, don't even know, defied the laws of physics and trucked Miles Garrett out of the way. 
I don't see that happening. I don't see anybody really trucking uh, Miles Garrett. Maybe Derrick Henry would be the <laughs> prime candidate or maybe his teammate Nick Chubb. But thinking not Devin Singletary, but he did it on that one. And uh, we're going to be trying to throw some pressure. Oh, 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 it was batted by Joyner, I think. Or Marcus Peters. I think he was, was he targeting Kleblet too? Regardless, Antoine Winfield comes down with it, but that ball was bad. It will see if he was target. He was targeting Kleblet. And Marcus Peters got his hand on the ball there, and Winfield comes down with it. Toe drag swag. That was a huge, huge play there by the Thunderbirds. Really needed a game changing play like that. And now we got a chance to march down here, score. And really open this thing wide. Uh, but not a good start to the drive as Kareem Hunt going to be stopped by Viliami Fioko for a loss of two. I'm going to play this a little bit conservative here. Let's just see if we can get some of this yardage back with a screen pass to Hunt. Don't need it all back, but just need some of it back. Hunt change in direction, and he actually will get most of it back. That was a good call. As long as we don't do something dumb here, I don't really like... This play I called either. I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, but well we got Oxmall wide open. I'll take it. And shout out to Mike at Rams fan in the comments. He's got seven receptions for 80 yards in this one. And uh, right now we're just trying to really kind of chew this clock down as much as we can. So we're going to go draw play to Tubby. And draw play hasn't been working too much. But it's going to work well on this one. Tubby might actually hit the century mark. He's at 91. And just a complete night and day difference from that first half where he really struggled. So maybe the offensive line heard me because I was kind of dogging them. Um, they're playing much better now, opening up some good running lanes for our running backs. There's Tubby again. That time only picking up two. And now we are in no rush here. We can just take our good sweet time. Do a couple of handoffs, hopefully get Tubby up to 100 yards, and hopefully we see the McDoubles raining down on the screen. Come on, Tubby. I am hungry, and I want me some McDoubles. Will that happen? It will not. Even close. Those uh, I-form fullback leads are not working well in this one at all whatsoever. And that's usually kind of like our bread and butter. But not so much in this one. And third and goal. The goal on this one is just don't throw a pick. Actually had Zay Jones there getting open on the slant. But good pressure from Patrick Queen and he got to us. But you know what? Totally fine going up 10 here. Um, we were able to take a lot of time off of that clock. Make it a two score game. And most importantly, our defense is finally woken up. And ready to play football. Dreadnoughts need two scores and at least one defensive stop with four minutes and 19 seconds to go. They could definitely do it all the time in the world. This is Madden, and we've seen crazy things like that happen all the freaking time. It's going to be a check down to Singletary. I mean, you're probably going to need more than just little four-yard gains. I know you just had an interception, Bryce, so you may be a little gun-shy. And actually... I came out dying, but this this could be a run. <laughs> really, I wouldn't be surprised. It is not. It's going to be, ooh, dangerous pass there. Called in by Harrison Bryant, but still going to need one yard to go in order to pick it up. Now, this could definitely see this being a run for sure. So I'm going to pretty much play it that way. Go ahead and use her up on Poyer, and it is going to be a play fake. I'm there with Poyer, and it's Antoine Winfield's second interception of the game. Does he even have any before this game? I feel like mostly it's been Patrick Peterson and Marcus Peters and DJ Reed. He may have, like, one, but he's got two in this game, and he is all over Bryce Young, reading his eyes all the way. And, and now... <laughs> Now, our biggest enemy is literally just father time. So I am just going to do everything I can to uh, take him out of the game and get out of here with a dub. We're going to have to go through the air for sure because I, I don't want to give it back to him. I definitely don't want to give it back to him. But it's going to be something safe uh, as I say that, though. It might just be Oxmo on the streak. We'll see, uh, we'll see what that corner does. No. 
It's not Darren Waller. It's a breakup. But we have uh, Justin Tucker, who has pretty much infinite range. He should be able to drill this 55-yarder, one would think. Should have the slowdown. Oh, yeah. Should be money in the bank. Shorty, what you drank? Ooh, that's a little closer than I thought. But 30-17, to 17, we pretty much got this game in the bag. One would hope. Well, if Melbourne has uh, any hopes of pulling out a miracle, they're going to have to pick this up right now. It's third and seven, minute and 35 to go. They haven't really done too much on this drive. Miles Garrett getting back there. We're flushing out Young, and he's going to throw it away, which is fine. I mean, it's obvious four down territory, so you know you have two downs to work with. And this is the ball game right now. Either uh, we win right now, or the Dreadnoughts probably just delay the inevitable. Uh, we'll see what happens here. I do not like the coverage that I came out in whatsoever. It's not conducive to stopping a pass. And it's going to be Kleblek keeping this uh, miracle drive, I guess, if you want to call it that. I am in the complete wrong defensive set as well. So if they pick up a gain here, I'm going to have to call a timeout. Ooh, not going to need to as DJ Reed knocks it out of Robert Woods' hands there. Clutch defensive play. Got to watch number 79. He has been playing his heart out in this one. It's been a great game for him. So I definitely got guys watching him. Bryce Young getting flushed out. You got to be kidding me. That's the fullback, Alec Ingold. I mean, even if they score here, they're going to have to get an onside kick and do all that jazz. So, you know, it's probably not going to happen. But if they did that and got a touchdown, uh, they would win. So... By one. So we don't want that to happen. We don't want that to happen at all. But probably too steep of a of a mountain to climb. But I just don't like how teams are always just able to drive down the field like in the last minute so easily against us. And let's just uh maybe sack Bryce Young and get the heck out of here. Ooh, Club Black burn me. It's another interception. Three so Bryce Young now at 23 interceptions. On the season, that's a big one from DJ Reed, and that will officially seal, sign, and deliver a win to the Thunderbirds. This was a this was a hard fought game. 30-17 is gonna be your final, but I do feel like it was just a bit closer than that. I mean, we definitely turned up the gas. Our defense did in that second half for sure, because the Dreadnoughts were pretty much going step for step with us, or should I say, even we were going step for step with them. I feel like they had the slight edge, but Jordan Love, nothing too crazy, but no interceptions. There was a couple potential ones there that could have been. Bryce Young did not play well at all. Three interceptions on the day, and running game, Tubby McDouble got robbed, short of 100 by one yard, but a nice yards per carry average. Same with Devin Singletary, and Kareem Hunt had two touchdowns as well, so that's awesome to see. Alexander Kleblet got that big tutty, though, so shout out to my guy, and eight receptions for 71 yards. He played great. Actually, both of our subscribers on our team and on the Dreadnoughts, Mike Oxmall played great too. Seven for 80, no touchdowns. But he had that one fumble. But look, you redeemed yourself, all right? Not going to lie. You definitely redeemed yourself. And taking a look at our defense, we got uh, Silas Vaden here. Big tackle for loss. Three total tackles. And Jay Monstro, one tackle. Uh, but overall, defense played good. And now it's time to see our subscriber player stats here for week 18. Virginia Beach Blues beat the San Juan Tigers. So we'll check on the stats of our subscriber receiver here, Yeezy Fuentes. Five receptions for 62 yards. That is a good day at the office for sure. Can't be mad at that at all. And good to see Nick Stoyer back on the field. Two receptions for 15 yards. And St. James back to zero targets. I fire the... San Juan Tigers coach, whoever that may be. I don't like him at all. He's uh, always shortchanging our guys. And getting a look at the defenders on here, we got Dior Love with a big tackle for loss and four solo or four total tackles as well. And King Love with two tackles. Can Condors win? They missed the playoffs, of course, but give them credit, man. They were really, really down there on the standings. And they did put together a nice little uh, win streak there towards the end. Wide receiver Braden Keys always plays good. Seven receptions for 74 yards. So very nice to see that from him. 
And we get a look at our subscriber safety duo here, Eli Sakowitz. No uh, interceptions or nothing, but uh, seven tackles. So he was all over the field. And then, of course, Mike Collins. He had four tackles, but nice win from the Condors. And uh, you finish the season strong, at least. And I mean, it's just not even fair, man. And you see, I'm not forced. <laughs> you see the wins over there. I'm not forced simming games here. The Houston Oilers, man, they will be in the playoffs. And QB Lucas Thomas here, 166 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. So nothing crazy, but it was still a really good game. And don't tell me, don't tell me that, uh, I think uh, running back Austin Gutierrez might have got hurt again. He was already hurt and I brought him back. But seeing as how he had no targets, oh man, that sucks. Nothing I could do about injuries, guys. I should have turned him off, I know. But we'll get a look at our newly added Wide receiver Floyd Butler played good in his first game as an Oiler. Five catches for 53 yards. And then Kyrie Brooks here, one catch for 13 yards. But the Oilers, I mean, they got something to prove, man. Paris Black Knights drop to the Louisville Desperados. And getting a look at subscriber player Jaden Hayes here, 193 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. I'm going to have to look curious to know what playbook they're running because seems like he always is like hovering sub 200 and of course uh, Caleb Hayes here the brother one reception for 25 yards Rio de Janeiro Redwoods we just added a quarterback to that team they get a big win and he played good Lionel Moore shout out to you 261 yards two touchdowns no interceptions and really really good solid game looks like a good uh football dispersion there and we also get a look at the antlers they got a subscriber player as well see ben the corner five tackles no big game wrecking plays and definitely probably could have used them in that one austin lumberjacks beat the brooklyn nighthawks so afc interdivision matchup that didn't really have too much bearing but uh the quarterbacks looks like they had a good old-fashioned duel michael yakin with 302 four touchdowns and no picks and Derek Derek goes to 203 yards, but two touchdowns and also no picks as well. So that's good to see. And getting a look at uh, subscriber tight end James Briner. Two receptions for 17 yards. Lone subscriber on the Chicago Elks as they do get the win over the London Mounties. And we'll get a look at our running back Darian Wolcott. Not the best game in the world. I mean, 18 attempts, 62 yards, 3.4 yards per carry, but must have been just enough because his boys still did get the w orlando orbits dropped to the memphis river hogs and uh, we got a few subscribers on the orbits roster here so go ahead and get a look first at the running game of johnny waters good to see him getting uh more or close to the same amount of reps as jonathan taylor they're kind of splitting reps he was at 13 for 55 and had a big touchdown as well so uh, that's nice to see and getting a look at our subscriber defender here flash parker two tackles for loss and a pass deflection so that's good to see and also five tackles solid game from flash oakland wizards beat the albuquerque armadillos wizards will be in the playoffs for sure and we'll get a look uh first and foremost at the running game of this guy man this guy is a this guy is a savage i am al musa if you're watching right now shout out to you you've played great since joining the sfl 19 carries for 83 yards and also two touchdowns as well so really good work there from you and subscriber Jaden taylor on the armadillos eight receptions for 72 yards and a touchdown that was really good to see and also bjorn jeffrey had a touchdown as well so both subscriber receivers you know tight end and receiver both had a uh, score in the end zone so that's awesome and we'll get a look at the subscriber player, Michael Briner here, the linebacker. One tackle for loss and three tackles. Ooh, and the Dublin Shamrocks beat the best team in the SFL to potentially keep their playoff hopes alive. We'll have to check. Uh, ooh, but that's why. Lamar Jackson's their quarterback, and he must have got hurt because Joe Flacco would not be playing. But Jesse Buzo Jr., 225 yards and... A touchdown so that's pretty good to see and get a look at the receiver uku tree rat here he's he's balling man he's playing really good no touchdowns but eight receptions for 88 yards averaging 11 per reception that's really really good to see 
And uh, got a course look at corner Tyrell Smoochie Wallace with five tackles. But we're going to have to check. Dublin Shamrocks might have made the playoffs. Oh, my God. The San Diego Aviators dropped 42 on the Bisons, and they're going to probably have the number one seed, I would imagine. Uh, Cameron Moore, I know we got to update your picture, my man, so please let me know what it should look like because I'm sure you don't want to look like Max Duggan over here. But 297 yards and four touchdowns. Mason Buchanan, three interceptions. That's that's not going to get it done. Good yardage and a touchdown, but those three picks, you know, uh, that probably ultimately did him in. And if we get a look at the running game from Nico Petey, it wasn't really that. I mean, Mason Buchanan really had the most rushing yards. Seven uh, attempts for 23 yards, only averaged 3.3 on the ground. Sacramento Sentinels dropped to the Vancouver Huskies, and they got a subscriber. Quarterback, of course, Rocky DiBernardo. Good yardage, 274. Two touchdowns, but just like the previous game, man, those three picks are going to do you in. And Patrick Mahomes doesn't throw three picks, so that is, I'm sure, why the Huskies pulled off the W. And save the best for last. Got to give love to the solo kicker slash punter in the SFL. In our game, of course, two punts for 84 yards with a net average of 33.5 and a long of 42. So, you know, nothing crazy, but... At least we're calling upon you. You get to see your guy out there on the field, and uh, that's really all that matters. So before wrapping up, let's take a look at the playoff picture. Make sure to look and see if your team is in it. So uh, over on the AFC, Aviators do get the number one seed. We get the number two seed, so there you go. London Monarchs get the number three seed, and the Houston Oilers, number four seed division winners, taking on the Oakland Wizards at number five. We got the Salt Lake City Bisons in at number six. And actually, the Lumberjacks from our division made it to the seventh seed. And that's going to be who we play next week. Okay. Things just got interesting. Uh, San, uh, San Antonio Voyagers get the, uh, the number one seed on the NFC. Virginia Beach Blues get the number two seed. Anchorage Snowhawks get the three. Vancouver Huskies get the four. Rio de Janeiro Redwoods get the five. OKC okay, Antlers get the six, and then the Portland Steamers get the seven. So that is how the first ever SFL playoffs are going to shake up. Lots of interesting storylines, and uh, we're going to be taking on a couple subscribers next week in the wild card game. So make sure you tune in. But as always, that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.